To summarize our progress this last week, notice that we extended beyond an initial understanding of how electrochemical cells work and focused our attention instead on learning how lithium-ion battery cells work and how they differ from standard electrochemical battery cells. We looked first at why someone might be interested in exploring using lithium-ion battery cells instead of standard electrochemical battery cells. We saw that some of the advantages happen to include high energy density and high power density, and the fact that a single package develops a higher voltage, so we don't need to stack a lot of cells in series for a high voltage battery pack. We looked at how the mechanism that causes a lithium ion battery cell to operate differs from that of a standard electrochemical battery cell. It's a little bit similar to how the negative electrode works in a nickel metal hydride cell. But in a lithium ion battery cell, the intercalation mechanism happens in both the negative and the positive electrodes, whereas in the nickel metal hydride, it's confined only to that negative electrode. We discussed that the intercalation mechanism is much more gentle than a standard chemical reaction. And for that reason, lithium ion battery cells tend to last much, much longer than uh, electrochemical battery cells do. For example, a recent news article I saw indicates that the battery pack in a Tesla vehicle will probably exceed 500,000 miles of range before it reaches end of life. We then spent some time exploring materials that are used for current collectors and for electrodes and for the separator and for the electrolyte in different types of lithium ion battery cells. We saw that the properties, especially of the different electrode materials, cause slight differences in how the different varieties of lithium ion battery cells perform. For example, we've seen that some have higher voltage than others and some might have longer life than others and some might be less expensive than others. And finally, we conducted this really interesting back-of-the-napkin thought experiment uh, regarding whether the global supply of lithium is sufficient to meet the possible future demand. And, at least in my summary, I think that the outlook looks very positive for the future. So where do we go from here? Remember that our focus in this specialization is leading to being able to develop algorithms to manage lithium ion battery packs. We've spent some time now learning about how battery cells work, and now it's time to begin changing our focus to look at how battery management systems work. And so the remainder of this course focuses on the required functionality of a battery management system. As we move on from this course into later courses in the specialization, those later courses are going to build on that knowledge and you will learn how to develop the algorithms that go inside of a battery management system. But at the present time, we're still really looking at a higher level functionality of the battery management system itself. In particular, we will ask the questions, uh, what does a battery management system need to do? What are some design considerations for the battery management system and for the architecture of the overall battery pack and how those are connected with each other? What are the sensing requirements of a battery management system and how do we actually find the sensors and build the sensors to meet those requirements? How does a battery management system safely connect to its load and disconnect from its load and some other safety considerations related to that? And finally, what does a battery management system need to know about the thermal management of a battery pack? So you will learn about all of these and even more in the remaining two weeks of the course.